glaciers in the Aleutian Range feed numerous lakes, and waterfalls cascade into rivers teeming with over 20 species of fish. Where Katmai meets the Pacific Ocean, sheer cliffs protect fertile valleys. signals the end of five months of hibernation for Tuyuk, an Alaskan brown bear. Tuyuk means chief in the native Aleutic language. This male has ruled his corner of Katmai for 10 of his 26 years. At his heaviest, he weighs close to half a ton. Today, he's gaunt and edgy as he emerges from his den. He's down to 270 kilograms. He heads into the wilderness to find food in order to build up strength. This is Tuyuk's kingdom. Brown bears are usually loners, but in Katmai, at times, things are different. Tuyuk's wilderness is home to thousands of brown bears, and they all compete for the same food. Here, the high concentration of bears demands a hierarchy. Tuyuk is on top and has fought to keep his crown. Tuyuk controls one large range of several in Katmai, but he's been challenged by other males many times. They compete with him for a bounty that Katmai offers. The rivers in Tuyuk's range annually erupt with millions of sockeye salmon. Every year, a new crop of the silverfish bursts from the cold Pacific Ocean. They struggle upstream towards the exact headwaters where they were born some five years before. The salmon run begins in summer, and thousands of hungry brown bears head to the rivers to fish. There are plenty of salmon, but there are also many bears so competition grows fierce. All of the bears are desperate to add bulk before the next winter. The protein and fat from the salmon allows them to gain a third of their ideal winter weight over a few months. Every bear wants the easiest and fastest way to eat the rich food. As king bear, Tuyuk occupies one of the most productive fishing spots. This prime location allows him to expend little energy while he gains close to 110 kilograms before early autumn. The first salmon won't appear until late June, and it is only April. Having used up his fat reserves during the long winter, Tuyuk needs to eat. Tuyuk's diet is diverse. He eats more than 200 types of plants. Vegetation makes up close to 80% of his diet now, and gorging on sedge is his first step to regaining strength lost during winter. He must return to full power, fast. 
When the salmon arrive, he needs to be strong enough to keep his top fishing rights. Today, Tuyuk grazes in a meadow in the western part of his kingdom. The pasture faces Hallow Bay, and its rich vegetation attracts many other brown bears. Nearby, one of Tuyuk's former mates shepherds two of his cubs to food. Anak means mother in Alutic, and she protects the small bears with her life. She's on high alert because small cubs are extremely vulnerable. Despite Hallow Bay's surface tranquility, danger to Tuyuk's offspring is always present. Anak relies on one of the keenest noses in the animal kingdom. She identifies both food and enemies from more than one kilometer upwind. And today, she smells trouble. Roaming males kill cubs because they are driven to ensure their own genetic lines. A sow with cubs will not mate for several seasons. Male bears will kill dependent offspring in order to mate with their mothers. Anak hurries her cubs away. Her instincts are sound, but the small bear's safety is never assured. During spring, the brown bears in Katmai have two raging appetites. While they devour grass, they also focus on mating. With Katmai's huge number of bears, hunger and desire are a volatile mix. Female bears are selective, and they accept only the fittest suitors. This spring, Tuyuk picks up the alluring scent of a young sow. Unwilling female brown bears can be dangerous, even to much larger males. In the past, Tuyuk's advances were always welcome. Today, something is different. The female doesn't fight, but she is reluctant. Then, she rejects him. Alaskan brown bears can live 30 years in the wild, and at 26, Tuyuk is getting old. This spring, he's been slow to gain weight. If the female bears find Tuyuk undesirable, it could signal weakness to his challengers. By mid-May, Katmai's spring is in full bloom. Tuyuk spends most of his time eating sedge, Greens enable him to gain lean body mass lost during hibernation. Every spring, this is his first priority. Since the age of nine, the king bear has fathered more than 50 cubs. This spring, for the first time in many seasons, female bears resist his advances. Subtle changes reveal his advanced age. Tuyuk's essential weight gain is behind schedule. His digestive system has slowed. 
Some teeth are worn, and his claws are slightly dull. There is stiffness in his rolling gait. His mating days seem to be over, and although he devours a sedge, he isn't regaining his former majesty. His apparent weakness attracts the attention of a younger male. The king recognizes an enemy. Kissim means alone in the local dialect. And this bear is not a stranger to Tuyuk. Several times over the past few years, Kassim challenged Tuyuk for his kingdom. The king always forced Kassim back down. Today, Tuyuk and Kassim face off. Brown bears rarely engage in full battle because all of them are equipped with formidable weaponry. Adult males sport 10 centimeter non-retractable claws that can slash with precision. They have 8 centimeter canine teeth that grasp and then tear flesh. Heavy skeletons support thick layers of muscle that are remarkably strong. Brown bears are among the most powerful creatures on Earth. Today, when Kassim confronts Tuyuk, the challenger adopts a stiff-legged strut. It's a display of size intended to intimidate the king bear. Tuyuk isn't impressed and warns the younger bear to back down. There is no battle today, but another confrontation is inevitable. Kassim has seen up close that the King Bear is getting old. Alaskan brown bears are the larger coastal cousins of grizzlies. During the last ice age, their ancestors shared the tundra with an even larger predator. Until 20,000 years ago, the giant short-faced bear ruled these valleys. The largest omnivorous mammal to walk the earth, these ancient bears weighed 600 kilograms and stood two meters at the shoulder. Long legs and forward-facing paws were built for endurance. Their enormous size enabled them to scavenge carcasses of mammoth and ancient bison and intimidate other prehistoric predators. But these formidable beasts required huge amounts of food, and the short-faced bear disappeared along with other giant beasts, victims of catastrophic climate change. They were succeeded by a smaller, more versatile contemporary, today's brown bear. Katmai's coastal bears grow larger than inland bears because the salmon they eat provide plenty of fat and protein. Females are just over half the size of males, but they're still formidable. On the other side of Hallow Bay, Anak and her cubs patrol the retreating tide. The mother bear demonstrates how to apply pressure on the sand and sniffs for a telltale scent. She searches for a seafood delicacy, razor clams. A small squirt of water reveals a clam's hiding spot. Brown bears are opportunists. They will eat almost anything, but resident Katmai bears rarely hunt. Between the meadow and the sea, they have everything they need. When Anak hits pay dirt, she uses her long claws with surgical precision. A 
A single clam is a tiny prize. The beach has enough of them to make an ample meal. Brown bears have two to three cubs every three years. Onyx twins will stay under her protection through their third year. But more than half of brown bear cubs die before their second winter. Some are the victims of male bears seeking to mate with their mother. Onyx must be vigilant. A threat appears. Kasim is fresh from his encounter with Tuyuk. The sight of Onik incites his interest. The family bolts. is agitated and aggressive. Two other bears are searching for clams. The newcomers are almost grown, but they are inexperienced. Neither is a match for Cassine. Young bears flee. Cassim pursues them. But not for long. Each brief encounter builds his confidence. It is early July, and the sod-eye salmon have arrived from the Pacific. Over 30 million fish force their way up Katmai's streams and rivers. Each one struggles to reach the exact spot where it was born around five years before. The sockeye salmon life cycle begins and ends in freshwater lakes and streams. Salmon fry live in their native lake for about two years. Then the young fish head to sea, where they spend another two to three years. Just before they fully mature, they leave the ocean. Using the sun's orientation and the Earth's magnetic field, they navigate back to their home stream. Upon arrival, scent guides the fish to their birthplace. Females lay eggs and males fertilize them. The spent fish die once the timeless cycle is renewed. If they're successful, they've completed close to a 16,000 kilometer journey. The salmon are so driven that they no longer eat. Swimming constantly, they battle strong currents, waterfalls, and hungry bears. Tuyuk travels kilometers to the falls in order to feast on salmon. This year, the salmon run is especially critical for this king bear. Tuyuk's not in top form. He hasn't gained enough weight on a diet of grass. The old bear needs a protein boost, fast. His rival, Kasim, is already at the fishing grounds. Taking control of the King Bear's rocky throne will afford him the most valuable fishing rights. The young challenger is ready to make his move at the first opportunity. This is where rank in Brown Bear hierarchy matters most. 
On the river, a granite stream bed forms a ledge 1.2 meters high. The cascade is an obstacle for the salmon, but it's a feeding bonus for the bears. The salmon must find a seam to drive their bodies through in order to swim further upstream to their destination. First, the fish collect in pools beneath the falls. Then they launch themselves with enough force to break the surface. The technique propels them above the falls, but it also serves them directly to the bears. Katmai's most dominant bears, like Tuyuk, are drawn to the falls. A rocky outcrop midway across is one of the best fishing positions on the river. Control of this perch gives its owner a critical advantage. Here, fishing requires virtually no effort. It's possible to pack on weight and save energy at the same time. For 10 years, this prime part of the outcrop has belonged to Tuyuk. When he arrives, he will immediately assume his position. Downstream, females and younger bears leap headlong into the roiling waters. Here it takes more work to catch fish. Bears downstream may eat fewer salmon, but most of them manage. They display a range of skill and style. Even injured bears have success if they've perfected their technique. Anik takes a big risk as she brings her cubs to the river. Dangerous males fish here too. The cubs need the nourishment provided by the salmon, but Anik will have difficulty keeping them safe in the rapids. Controls the stream. Two other cubs avoid the aggressive male. The swift current separates Anik from her young. Kasim sees his opportunity. He attacks. Kasim could slaughter the male bears within seconds. Anik won't allow this. At this moment, she may be the most dangerous bear in Katmai. Kasim outweighs the mother bear by 230 kilograms but he backs away. Fighting Anak is not worth his energy today, and the summer isn't over yet. Kasim sees an opportunity to take Tuyuk's position above the falls. He chooses the prized spot. As he has for decades, Tuyuk arrives on the scene. 
Instinctively, the old king bear moves toward his preferred perch at the top of the falls. He's accustomed to catching and eating more than 23 kilograms of salmon in a single day. Mid-meal, Cassine senses the king bear approaching. Now the balance of power teeters above the falls. Tuyuk has more experience, but he is a weakened warrior. Against his younger, stronger rival, his only chance is to strike fiercely and first. This time, Cassim responds with confidence and aggression. Tuyuk lands beneath the falls in another bear's claim. The fallen king is chased further downstream. Kasim now fishes from the throne. His coup is not complete until he finds a willing mate. Only then will the challenger assume his full status as King Bear. Now that Cassine controls the falls, Tuyuk loses the benefits of an easy perch. tries to fish, other bears take advantage of his diminished status. Tuyuk has lost his position of dominance in the hierarchy. Still, he doesn't give up. It's late in the mating season. Cassim is now King Bear. He exercises his royal right and moves towards a sow. At first, she's elusive. Soon she warms up to the new king. If all goes well, in about seven months, the sow will give birth during the coldest part of the coming winter, snug in her den. The new cubs born in the spring will continue Cassine's genetic line. September, and winter is just weeks away. Cassine still gorges daily, but Tuyuk has trouble eating. In his weakened state, he's susceptible to parasites and illness. He enters a downward spiral. Tuyuk has expended too much energy. He is tired. The old bear faces winter unprepared. In the autumn, temperatures in Katmai drop below freezing. 
colors change above the streams and below. The surviving sockeye are exhausted and starved. When they reach their spawning grounds, their bodies prepare for mating by transforming from silver to red. The fish have used up their fat reserves during the arduous swim upstream. Now they deplete stored protein to complete the final stage of their lives. Their bodies contort and their jaws twist and bow, exposing jagged teeth. Wasted and weary, the sockeye persevere. Even dying salmon appeal to the insatiable bears. In the shallows, Cassim targets a school of bright red fish. The three kilogram salmon he snatches has less than half of the nutrients it contained when it left the ocean eight weeks ago. Cassim devours the brain and skin, parts still rich in fat. He's now a 360 kilogram behemoth and has added several centimeters of fat. He'll continue to eat until snow begins to fall. As Cassim packs on his final winter weight, Tuyuk battles his own deteriorating body. Though there is still plenty of food, the old ruler's body breaks down. He is alone and weak. Tuyuk has spent all of his 26 years in Katmai's paradise. He climbed the hierarchy with tooth and claw. Now the old bear may not live to see another spring. It's late autumn. A sockeye male finally comes home to his birthplace. A female claims a patch of rocky stream bed and aggressively defends it. Fanning her body, she clears excess gravel and receives her mate. To stimulate the female, the male shudders alongside her. The female releases more than 4,000 eggs into their watery nest. Then, the male fertilizes them. Only the eggs lodged safely among the stones will hatch in three to four months. Of the 4,000 eggs, perhaps two sockeye salmon will return here to spawn. As September draws to a close, the smell of death permeates the streams of Katmai. The stench is also the scent of life. Sockeye corpses litter the banks and shallows, but they create a habitat of perpetual renewal. Nutrients from the decaying fish will nourish the shrubs and trees near the streams and rivers. The salmon are the life's blood of Katmai. Farther downstream lies another body. One of Onyx's cubs is dead, killed by an unknown male. himself may be close to death. 
old, weak bears can die during hibernation. Life and death in Katmai's ruthless kingdom are always intertwined. Season gale batters Katmai. Some bears now brave a stormy lake for the last of the dying sockeye. Within days, the bears will need to retreat into their winter dens. This season of eating salmon, the male cub is nearly doubled in size. His chances of surviving until the next spring are good. Cassim is now a king bear. Next spring, he will patrol the wild shores and mate in the shadows of Katmai's volcanoes. But one day, he too will be deposed. Perhaps Onyx and Tuyuk's male cub will be his successor. For now, all of the bears prepare for winter. It's part of their cycle of survival in Katmai's violent Eden.